Asia's presence in the global political and market sphere is becoming increasingly important. The world calls us to take up a greater role and responsibility. Through our flagship program called the Asia Leadership Track, which provided scholars at Harvard, we met with over 700 individuals, organizations of traveling to over 30 cities in 15 countries across Asia. This has led us to clearly understand what core challenges in Asia need to be confronted and how. We welcome all of you to join in this noble cause and endeavor. Cambodia, a country in mainland Southeast Asia, has a long and rich history which dates back to the mighty Khmer Empire with Angkor as its center of power. But from 1975, Cambodia witnessed Khmer Rouge, the most violent and deadly years in its history. This is the first time in like 500 years that Cambodia, the whole country, is under one constitution, under one government. We do not want to go back to the past, the Khmer regime. We don't want our kids, our grandchildren to face the same what we faced in 1975. The biggest challenge for, for Cambodia is to, you know, the capacity of teacher. In, you know, during the war, but also during the Khmer Rouge, 80% uh, of the teacher were killed. It's very hard to implement uh, curriculum reform, very hard to give the quality education. We are doing, uh, at the moment, a lot of mass production. And our cost and our labor uh, will not be able to compete with all the countries, Kabi, Myanmar, Bangladesh, where they have huge population and also cost matter. We have a lot of pressure uh, from many others, from economic point of view, infrastructure, social sector, education, how you name it. But the fact is that the government, I mean, no matter how effective and innovative and efficient uh, they are, they can't solve all the problems. So people need to participate. I would say our determination, participation, abuse are very much a key component and they are inspired. And uh, the inspirations uh, should be and can be translated into positive energy that will help make this country a prosperous one. The fact that we have a very young population, very thriving, if you go to the school here in Cambodia, people learn almost 12 hours, 15 hours a day. Children will go to their normal general education and then they will learn Chinese, then they will learn English, then they, they will learn they've got math tuition, then they've got it's crazy how people are craving to learn. Having this willingness to learn is is very important already. Despite all the hardship, the genocide regime that completely destroyed the fabric of the country completely. We must move. Our country before the genocide was very well uh, developed. We got to go back to the glory day of Angkor.
Singapore, a city-state located at the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula, has grown its economy by an average of 9% each year. Now, Singapore is building the world's first smart nation by harnessing technology to the fullest with the aim of improving the lives of citizens. Singapore is a small country, but it seems to have a huge international presence. And so we went into the track and tried to understand what, what was the dynamic. It is easy to usually think that small countries are vulnerable, so people don't take it seriously, but this is not true for Singapore. We have been traditionally a trading country, right? We rely on import and exports of our harbour and trade uh, between our neighbours and, and the regional powerhouses. Um, it's not something that we can rely on forever. To make it an inclusive movement, we go out there and literally look at all the young people or people with ideas and see how to support them, how to empower them to grow their ideas. Social enterprises is actually, you know, rather new around uh, and I think there are still a lot of regulations, a lot of policies in the making. So I believe the sector needs to evolve, like how entrepreneurship sector have evolved and how the uh, social entrepreneurship movement have evolved as well. So I think that it's a lot of um, uh, mindset change. It's a lot of involvement in how certain services and applications will apply to citizens and perhaps hopefully catalyze a lot of uh, self-creation or possible co-creation with the citizens. So I hope that addresses the softer part of smart cities. We could see for ourselves how there was a motivation model from the government and very bustling activity at the private level and at the academic level and it comes together very well and therefore projecting Singapore's image beyond just its little shores but to the international community. Bangladesh, on the northern coast of the Bay of Bengal, is the world's second largest apparel exporter of Western brands. Presently, a lot of garments industries available in Bangladesh. This is the subject which we felt 25 years back. We, a group of industrialists, educationalists, philanthropists, all we were thinking what you as I said, how to have a Education standard can be improved with the modern and the higher education. System of education, it is divided into three sections. One is the private schools and universities, and uh, one is government schools, and another one is madrasa system. So I think so, mm, uh, some work has to be done the government sector and they are working very hard. It is a challenge but if only the government could like um, give more opportunities to these uh, government schools then people would have just got into these government schools. So like more facilities, more uh, high quality teachers and more trained teachers. I know that the majority of the people who are living in Bangladesh are facing poverty. However, I think that the quality of education still has room to improve. It has developed in the past so many years, however, it has um, a lot of space for more improvement. And I'm a Bangladeshi and I know that my country and all the citizens in my country, they believe and they have hope in Bangladesh. After all, we are all human beings, we should be treated equally and 
everyone should be given the same opportunity. Otherwise, how will you know that whether that person is capable of doing something? Malaysia is a Southeast Asian country located on a strategic sea lane that exposes it to global trade and foreign culture. In the last two decades, Malaysia has undergone tremendous growth and prosperity and has arguably made significant progress in race relations. We are multiracial, multi-ethnic, multi-everything. We are very diverse. So we have to make sure everybody thinks as Malaysians. Do not bother about where your heritage comes from, where your religion, what your religion is, where your inclinations are. That's not material. You must open up to people from all parts of the world to come and stay and live and contribute. And, and I think this is very crucial. Uh, if Malaysia is to remain competitive, we must manage our talent. There's lots of opportunities for women here to uh, challenge assumptions, prove people wrong, and carve a new path for uh, what being a leader means, whether you're a man or woman, young or old, um, from whatever uh, you know, country or wherever you identify yourself as. Um, I feel fortunate to be in a being an example and, and sticking to what we believe in and doing what we feel is right. We must have the social cohesion amongst our people because we are multiracial, multi-ethnic, multi-everything. We're very diverse. So we have to make sure that, that diversity actually is galvanized for a common national interest. That's my vision, which means that everybody thinks as Malaysians do not bother about where your heritage comes from, where your religion, what your religion is, where your inclinations are. That's not material. What's material is you're a Malaysian. You have responsibility to add value to this country and to our society. We play our role effectively as the foundation economy advisor to the government. And we play our role in advising the government in terms of economy, uh, policy, formulation. Always hold national interests above any other interests. That's the key. I feel like because of so many new opportunities and opening up and um, you know, emerging economies with uh, you know that that are embracing things like entrepreneurship, embracing um, women in leadership positions, uh, we feel very empowered to be working together, and moving along together, and helping each other along. It's not just about economy, it's not just about business, you know. It is about this element of culture, this element of sustainability, this element of multiculturalism, this element of you know, uh, Asians. This is what we are very proud of. We are very much reflections of truly Asian. With thousands of years of continuous history, China is one of the world's oldest civilizations. Entrepreneurs have endured in China, both in times of prosperity and during war and crisis. Here, this is a war zone. Uh, if you look at the medical field, um, most of the medical breakthroughs happen during wars. You, are, you don't have much choice, um, you need to innovate really quickly, and innovation, no one's really out to innovate, everyone's just out to solve problems, and afterwards you call it innovation.
政府它其实是倒过来的，它希望看到你有多少收入，有多少营业额，养了多少人之后，才愿意相信你说说的话。Company growing so fast and industry growing so fast. Of course, we are looking for more experienced people who are not who doesn't exist in within the industry. So, uh, so we also facing the manpower problems. So, how to find the right people and how to find the people who actually believe in the vision is difficult. We here, the whole society, is providing a very good. 建议年轻人，尽管我们知道创业失败的可能性非常大，但是呢，希望年轻人要有些，要有创新的精神。Chinese are very creative, unlike what most people think. A lot of what was originally going on was copying, and that's not necessarily bad. Um, so when you have children, that becomes plainly apparent. You know, that's how children learn. They learn by copying you. And uh, then they start to make it their own. And so a huge amount of what was going on in China was copying to learn as quickly as possible. And then uh, make it your own. So part of that culture still exists in what we call innovation in China today. Just in the startup stage, so our business model, commercial model, is not really can do work. So I, we will next, we will put more focus. We are always hoping that innovation companies have the most easy to accept. 而不要只是希望有政府或者其他的东西可以给非常多的帮助。呃，尽管我们知道这是需要，但是这不是应该一个创业者真正所去探讨的，特别是。